Okay, we're back. This is the Financial Quarterback, and we're taking your calls at 800-321-0710. Michelle said, I read your retirement reality check and Ed Slot's Time Bomb book. Both are very good. We got to get Ed Slot back talking about how his latest book is sweeping the nation. And by the way, I'll buy that book for you at no charge. It's the Retirement Savings Time Bomb. When you schedule and keep your no obligation review, we got Brian who says, I love all the education, Josh. Do you ever talk about becoming a financial advisor for potential career changers in their 40s? Sure, what do you want to know? Uh, type it in the chat box of the youtube.com. And if you go to youtube.com and type in the financial quarterback, you get to type in any question and I will answer it today live on the program. Maybe you're bashful. Maybe you don't want your voice to be heard on the radio. But folks, realize that our show is live, unscripted and uncensored. And folks, what about you? Have you called us yet for your free analysis, 888-988-JOSH? And I will give you the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan where we'll cover debt management, cash flow. Maybe you want to know cash flow in retirement. Can you do it? When can you do it? Asset protection strategies, tax savings and growth strategies. So we got a lot to talk about, but I always love to hear from you. So next segment, more U.S. inflation pressure to come from seniors income boost. U.S. retirees may be seeing bigger than usual income bumps next year, maintaining upward pressure on inflation as the country reopens and demand outstrips supply. Next year's Social Security cost of living, according to Financial Advisor Magazine, Consumer Price Index jumped 5.4% in June, the most since 2008, amid a rise in hotels, used cars, and airfares. The used car inflation has been significant. I've been getting all kinds of offers for my Honda Odyssey from 2013. People want, people paying big money for that. U.S. retirees may see bigger than usual income bumps next year, maintaining upward pressure on inflation as the country reopens. Next year's Social Security cost of living adjustment, which is tied to the Consumer Price Index, is forecast to come in at a 6.1% jump. Where are we gonna get the money for this? I mean, our, our dollar is going to be worthless. Worth less, not worthless, but worth less significantly over time. And that's why you want to invest because cash will become worth less over time. So many of you are like, I have a million dollars in cash. I have 500,000 in cash and I don't know what to do with it. Call us at 888-988-JOSH. You may have 50,000 in cash. You don't know what to do with it. Call us at 888-988-JOSH. Now, the annual Social Security adjustment is made to ensure payments to seniors keep up with the cost of living. Now, the Federal Reserve and President Joe Biden's administration are calling the price increases as transitory and limited to certain sectors, such as rental cars, but sustained gains for income and contract wages could keep price gains going up. Seniors would be getting about $60 billion more next year in payments than in 2021, adding 0.3% to total disposable income. That sustains inflationary pressure on the margins. Meanwhile, government employees are seeking a bigger boost to wages. That's tied to a separate indicator called the Employment Cost Index. The Biden administration imposed a 2.7% increase in government pay, but the American Federation of Government Employees, the largest federal union, are pushing for 3.2%. All this as a price. Everybody has a price, according to Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man from, the, remember the WWE guy? Yeah, you got me there. Money, Ted DiBiase. Ted, remember him? I do. 
and he would like stuff dollar bills in people's mouths and he, he would say everybody has a price well apparently the price of the u.s citizen is an inflation bump at a time where the government's going broke you know we need to like stop these checks anyway it's like rome you know we're fiddling as our dollar is uh becoming less and we're being raided by the visigoths Next segment, why buying a market dip can be good and bad. The concept of buying the dip, which, you know, people say buy the dip. But what if the dip turns into a stinking cliff? When a stock index like the S&P 500 falls in value, it's a good time to buy since shares are bought at a discount. Investors then reap the financial rewards. So we saw a dip on Monday of this week. Did you take advantage of? Did you actually buy the dip? Now, what's been happening to the market is this weird kind of side. It goes up, it goes down. It's basically been the same since May. So there's not been a lot of activity. It just goes down a thousand, up a thousand, down a thousand, up a thousand. That, to me, is like a sideways channel that's either going to push up or push down. I don't think we can maintain this sideways thing for long. Now this week, uh, the, the market tumbled 2.1%. The Dow, the worst day since October on investor fears about the COVID-19 Delta variant. However, the market rebounded Tuesday with the Dow closing 1.6% higher. COVID-19 Delta variant seems to be getting a lot of people are saying, hey, I got to get the vaccine, even though I didn't get the vaccine in the past. Um, it could be everybody's like the COVID variant, the Delta, it's like the Delta force. So the market went down due to COVID-19 fears. I, I'm bigger worried about, I, I'm not truly worried about that because now they're using the COVID-19 push that they're, they're going to push more vaccines due to the Delta variant. Uh, we're probably going to then stem the tide of COVID even further, which will be good for the market. I, I'm more worried about inflation. That's what I'm, my, my biggest worry is inflation transitory or isn't it? And right now the Fed and President Biden are saying it's transitory because they don't want to freak people out. But what if it isn't? And that's when you're going to see maybe a correction. The current environment is generally supportive of stock investing. Low interest rates make stocks more attractive relative to other asset classes like cash and bonds. Maybe you're concerned about inflation. Give us a call, 800-321-0710. Or call my office right now, 888-988-JOSH, to schedule your very own Income for Life Blueprint. And you'll get your very own customizable model where you get to see your whole life on one easy to understand page. Maybe you want to learn about asset protection strategies, maybe tax saving strategies, maybe growth strategies in these uncertain times. Call us for the 45 minute review. One big caveat on buying the dip likely won't be a long term financial winner for people who aren't invested but are instead sitting on a pile of cash and waiting for a market sell-off to move their money. Investors who buy the market during a market rout should know stocks may continue to fall. There's a phrase called catch a falling knife. So up next, we're going to talk about the Biden payroll tax hike beyond the donut hole. No, not the Medicare donut hole, the Biden tax donut hole when we return, and I'd love to hear from you. Folks, this is a live, unscripted, and uncensored, shockingly raw radio show where you get to ask us any and every financial question you have, no matter how dumb other people think it is. I never think it's dumb. Now, up next, we're going to answer a question from Brother Ted. Uh, what's the best inflation hedge? Gold, silver, commodities, tips, Bitcoin, foreign currencies, emerging market stocks. He, he, he asks just about everything. <laughs> so we'll return with the exciting conclusion to Brother Ted's question and go to youtube.com and search 
in the search box for the financial quarterback and hit the subscribe button. Folks, this is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Okay, we're back taking your questions at 800 321 Up next, Brother Ted, the best inflation hedge. Gold, silver, commodities. I like gold and silver because it's more traditional. And I think, you know, it holds its value well. And based on the studies of David Ranson, um, who was on, he, he left a very compelling argument that gold is sort of the ultimate inflation hedge. And he had a report that was suggesting gold is the ultimate hedge. Now, how do you buy gold? Do you buy gold off of people on the radio? I don't really think you need to. You're generally paying seven to 10% to buy, seven to 10% to sell. Uh, if you wanna add gold in a portfolio, you can do so very easily with physical gold ETFs. Because here's what happens is, they say, well, if you want to have, you know, 10 grand of gold in your house, 20, 30 is like a hedge in case we, we kind of have an apocalypse dick moment in your house. I guess that's fine. But if you're looking for a significant portion of your portfolio, you're going to end up having a custodian anyway. And all these people that push physical gold, they say, oh, well, we can hold it for you. You don't want to hold it in your house. They're... You know, so the point is, beyond the amount you want to keep in your house, you can do gold ETFs where they physically store it for you, and it's a fraction of the cost. So also, you know, how do you know the gold salesperson isn't selling you tungsten? You know, are you really that much of an expert in the difference between tungsten and gold? Like, are you? I, I don't know. Most people don't know. So, uh, Ernesto, you have any questions financially from the week <laughs> you, that well, you or our listeners want to know? You had me stumped there with uh, with the David Rance and I was and not keeping gold in the house. I was imagining people, uh, you know, getting braces, those gold gold caps on their teeth. Yeah, gold <laughs> dust. You know the uh, yeah. I I think generally you want to make sure that you're. You know, maybe have a percentage, 5% in gold, 10% as a hedge. But anything beyond that is sort of, you know, what are you going to do? You know, if really it gets that bad, get it. <laughs> you know, um, it was like in the middle of COVID where people running out and getting gold. No, they're running out and getting booze and food. So we kind of went through a semi-apocalyptic thing a year ago. And you had Costco... I went to Costco a lot. I don't know. Did you go to Costco, Ernesto? I actually renewed my Costco membership, uh, just like all bachelors would, and then I never use it. Oh, well, that, that's that's a bad financial tip. <laughs> a bad investment. Cancel the Costco subscription if you're not going. You know, I, I, I think I spent a lot at Costco this year, but because I kept buying things, you know, but do you really need a colon cleansing quantity of pistachio nuts? And now all the pistachio nuts that I bought a year ago in March of 2020 are now bad. They taste nasty. <laughs> so I should have learned how to store them properly. And you know, those hermetically sealed things. Although I did that one time, I bought like grain and I was pounding it. And I don't know, I don't even think I've used the grain. It probably is all moth eaten. Okay, next up, the Biden, the Biden tax increase and what the donut hole is. So few taxpayers would be affected by the payroll tax increase because the majority of households do not exceed 400 grand of total income. For 2021, Social Security tax. Yes, no, that's wrong. This is from thinkadvisor.com. You got to realize small business owners are retiring because they're getting screwed in taxes. I get to pay 37% of the federal government, 10 plus percent of the state government. I got to pay FICA tax. I got to pay social security tax. I got to pay tax. I got to pay property tax. I gotta, if, if you look at the effective tax rate on the property taxes and all the taxes I pay, I'm easily at 50%. And, and I know a lot of tax saving strategies. So no, 
just because they say the tax hike only affects people under 40 grand. You know why? We don't need to work. I don't need to work. I'm going to retire and not deal with paying the government 50% of everything I make. I'm going to go buy a beach house, sip pina coladas on the beach, surf with my beautiful wife and seven kids. You know, th that's what small business owners think. I mean, they've accumulated enough. They're generally pretty frugal. Like, I don't need to go out to dinner every night. Getting too fat anyway. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, so there's a lot of things you could do. You know, also, by the way, you know, eating healthy saves you money. So there's a whole host of issues, folks, that if you, you know, I challenge the premise of all these financial articles that, oh, if you make under 400 grand, you're safe. No, you're not. Because your, 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 your employer is going to say, I'm done. Mark Zuckerberg is even saying, I'm done. I'm gonna, he's going to retire and be like a Bill Gates philanthropist and try to control the world through philanthropy from his beautiful beach house in Kauai. You know where he lives in Kauai? He lives in a, a fortress, right? It's amazing. He bought up all, you know, all this area. You know, he can eat his avocados if there's the world going to hell. They can shut down during COVID. Um, you know, I've, I've thought about moving to Kauai. Kauai is a great island. He, he's a smart man. It's too quiet for you. I don't. You know see why that. it's so smart for him? Like they still have civilization. They still have a Costco. Still have a Starbucks. Still have a Home Depot. Um, and it's one of the most beautiful places. On so he, he he loves it there, and he just keeps buying up land. So that you don't have that privilege of going on vacation to his favorite Hawaiian island. But good for him. But, you know, he's done. Uh, there's another report that Larry Page of Google, Larry Page is off to Fiji. He's going to buy an island. So this all 40%, you know, if you make under 400 grand, you're safe. If you make 400 grand, are you really safe? I know Brian who's commenting. Hey, Brian, I think you put me in touch with a dear client and listener friend, John, who recently passed away a few years back. And man, I miss John. John was, John was as smart as a whip. So Brian writes, always love the, the YouTube format. Always listen on radio on Saturday mornings on my way into business. Now I can rewind what I miss. While doing my morning paperwork, great, Brian. And if you want to ever join us as a financial advisor, if you're the same Brian I'm thinking about, uh, send me an email, josh at jelinski.com. We'd love to get to know you more. Uh, he says, it's great to see you obviously love what you do in helping people. It's inspiring for someone who has similar aspirations and was wondering what the best route to take to success is. I'd be happy to help um, mentor you if you want to become a financial advisor. We're always looking for good ones. Always looking for a few good men and women. We're like the Marines of financial planning. Through snow, through sleet. Now, Brother Ted says on commodities. Aren't some better in an economic downturn like coffee or corn futures? Brother Ted, I think you can get burned by trading, you know, corn and pork bellies. And, you know, you know that's not my area of specialty. It was a guy we had on the show one time. That was his whole specialty. Lumber, oil, you could do it, but I don't think those... Okay, the reason why I would say... I would not, I would not say commodities are a hedge against inflation is, yes, people bought coffee amidst the pandemic, but we did not have true deflation. We had inflation. The government was just handing out checks eventually there will be no more money like you socialism's great until you run out of other people's money just ask cuba so coffee and corn and lumber and oil are all great until there are no more buyers gold is sort of like a hedge so there's always going to be rich people you're always going to have the poor you always have the rich so it's like they're always kind of looking for something to be a store of value. So that's my take on inflation from the YouTube chat box. 
And folks, go over to YouTube.com, type in the financial quarterback, and also go over to retirementrealitycheck.com today and get my book. And we're going to give away something special for the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan. I will give away a cash analysis worksheet. It's a very simple tip. I don't know if I've ever really offered this. And there's tons of financial tips that we can give you. In fact, there are something like 35 tips to save money. And it could be you're rich, you're middle class, you're poor, you're a reacher, you're an emerging wealth person. We're gonna give you free potential strategies to consider. You don't have to hire us. What you can do at no charge today Call us for the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan and you'll get a free cash flow analysis worksheet plus the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan for retirement. Call us now. Don't talk, drop the ball. Uh, come into the huddle. 888-988-JOSH. 888-988-5674. We'll be back after these messages. Hi, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. We have time for listener questions at 800-321-0710. If you have a financial question, now is the time to chime. 800-321-0710. We have room for about, I don't know, a couple more questions left. So what about the donut hole? Well, I went on a diatribe about the 400,000 income. But basically, Social Security taxes are only applied up to 142 grand of earnings. But Medicare taxes have no income limitation. So here's the other thing that they don't tell you. You used to be taxed on 100 grand of Social Security income if you were a small business owner. And you would be paid 15%. That was called the self-employment tax. So that's 15 on top of the 40 people. Like, wake up. Just because your employer pays it, doesn't mean it's not paid. And when you're self-employed, Ernesto, you got to pay that self-employed tax, right? Correct. That gets you every year, doesn't it? Absolutely. It does. doesn't matter if you have a good year or a bad year, you still got to pay it. And what they're doing is they're raising that threshold. So now you make 142 grand of income and you're self-employed, you got to pay 15% on the first 142. And then what they're talking about is, oh, well, the rich are screwing social security. So we're going to raise that to be what their income is. So if you make 400 grand. So what'll happen is if you make between 142 and 400, you don't pay social security tax, but if you pay 400 above that, so if you make a million, then you're going to pay an extra 150 grand on social security tax. It'll be less than that. It might be like a hundred. That, that's going to have a significant impact. That equates to two or three jobs lost or people that aren't hired. Never got a job from a poor person. And people don't realize, like economics, the laws of economics cannot be repealed. There's an additional Medicare tax of 0.9%. This is depressing, this article from Think Advisor. Self-employed people pay all this other tax. So 12.4% plus 2.9%. So very depressing. So... Despite Social Security taxes being regressive because of their fixed percentage and taxable earnings ceiling, subsequent benefits are progressive because lower earners receive higher replacement ratios on lifetime contributions. Altogether, Social Security is more impactful on a lower, lower earning individual in retirement. What remains unclear is if Biden's proposal would include a secondary earnings limit and subsequently larger Social Security benefits to help offset the additional upfront taxes. If it does not include a secondary limit, higher earners falling on the wrong side of the donut hole may be faced with an outright tax without limitation that acts as a subsidization tool for other Social Security recipients. So we have a real problem here where basically more and more people are gonna be taxed more and more on social security. So it's, it's the donut hole on social security. And next we're gonna be talking about more Americans want freedom and purpose in retirement. And, and I'm gonna throw open this question to our listeners at 
321-0710. More Americans want to be free, engaged, and purposeful in retirement, and are seeking help to plan those years according to panelists at the Securities Industry and Financial Market Association's virtual roundtable. Now, most people are trying to preserve their assets and not spend down their money owing to different uncertainties that might happen at some point in retirement. 86% of adults and 89% of those surveyed said they wish there were more ways to use your, their talents in retirement. So that's interesting. But first, we're going to go to Bob, who has a question on where to put money from the sale of the house. Go ahead, Bob. You're on with Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, Josh. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm planning on selling my house. I feel like real estate is in a bit of a bubble right now, and uh, so that means I'll be delaying the purchase of the next house kind of in so I'm really interested in thinking about where to put that money, the cash that I get from the sale of the house, more, as you were just referencing, more interested in protecting than growth, uh, you know, in the, in the anticipation that we might have. Well, well, what you could do, and, and, and man, that's a great strategy. You sell your house, you go rent somewhere for a couple of years until there's a decline. Now, just to let you know, our studies of real estate dynamics might mean the bottom of the real estate market, and you know I'm not trying to have a crystal ball or whatever, might be five to seven years away. Why is that? You usually have things peak, so we might have a real estate peak out next year. So that's 12 months, so we're already, let's say, whatever, summer of 2022. Then what'll happen is when real estate, you generally have a slow, 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 Next bottom might be whatever, five years from today, might be the absolute low when you want to buy. Generally, based on our study of market cycles. Uh, there's some reasons for that. I don't want to really go into it, but it's, it's due to kind of housing cycles and how they move. Um, so if you rent, you could invest the money for preservation of capital. You could have so much in gold, so much in cash, so much in bonds, so much in treasuries, so much in stocks. You can have sort of like a very conservative to moderate conservative asset mix in a fiduciary account. That would be a great hedge against inflation, but you would also keep some liquidity. Then when you buy that house, take advantage of low rates. Now what may happen, and this is why we think the market may kind of go down significantly after next year, is we think kind of interest rates will remain low for another year and then start to creep up again. And that will probably ultimately cause the housing slowdown. But we'll see. Nobody knows the exact future. But, but I would definitely say to call us for preservation of wealth strategies at 888-988-JOSH, 888-988-JOSH during the break for a 45-minute ultimate financial game plan. And you can keep uh, listening. And if you have another question, Chime in at 800-321-0710. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. Hi, we're back. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback, coming to you live. And folks, if you want the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan, call us now at 888-988-JOSH, and you get three free gifts. First, the MaximizeMySocialSecurity.com calculation. Second, the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan. And three, the Income for Life report. But you got to call us at 888-988-JOSH. So we're talking about a survey that Americans want more freedom and purpose in retirement. And on tomorrow's show, we're going to talk about investors want, want advice from the heart. They, they, don't, they don't care about money. They want advice from the heart. We're going to talk about that. Everyone wants to be loved. And how the stock market works. But as we talk about how Americans want more freedom and purpose, do you think that's true? Sometimes I think these surveys are generated by financial companies to like get scripting or, or whatever. But... 86% of adults and 89% of retirees surveyed said they were more 
They were looking for ways to benefit and use their talents. I, I think that's probably true. People don't want to just do nothing in retirement. That's a good way to die. You're preparing for death if you do nothing. Laying there around, you want to be serving and giving. Or as some people call, after 60 or 50 is sort of your general stage of life where you can have the most contribution to the most amount of people. Your grandkids need you. Your church needs you. Your shul needs you. Your charities need you. Not only your money, but your time and your gifts. The challenge is to get millennials engaged in growing assets and planning for retirement, according to the study. So millennials, if you want to save, we're here for you. 888 josh Next up, we have Rich, who has a Roth conversion question. Go ahead, Rich. Hi, Rich. Rich, you have a question on Roth con conversions. Go ahead. Okay, you going dropped. Once, going so twice. Going once, going twice, <laughs> no gone. <word. laughs> Don't let your retirement be gone to chance. Get a plan. And we have one minute left. So folks, how do you get tax advantage strategies that help you grow assets? And also, how do you get educated to be sure you know what you really need in retirement? That was a critical focus of this article from Financial Advisor IQ. So only one in four retirees said they use professional help to plan them for retirement. Here's the thing. You need professional guidance. Give us a call. 888-988-JOSH. 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 For the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan. We're here for you. Call us now and get the 45-minute ultimate financial game plan. When you schedule and keep your no-obligation review. 888-988-JOSH. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m. 888-988-JOSH. We're live, unscripted, uncensored. 888-988-JOSH. The preceding program was sponsored by the Jelinski Advisory Group. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications, including Five Star Wealth Manager, Advisory of the Year finalist by Senior Market Advisor, and Top of the Million Dollar Roundtable, are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Josh Jelinski or Wealth Quarterback LLC. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Wealth quarterback website at www.jelinski.org. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to effect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice. Due to various factors, including changing market conditions, the information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Josh Jelinski and Wealth Quarterback do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature, is provided for informational purposes only, and should not be construed as legal or or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Advisory services offered through Wealth Quarterback LLC.